Mathematical modeling is a research method that can inform public health planning. For example, we can use a model to investigate the best vaccine to protect an elderly population at increased risk of infection and severe complications from seasonal influenza. For adults over 65, the high-dose trivalent inactivated vaccine is currently recommended when available. Other options for this population include standard dose trivalent inactivated vaccine, adjuvanted trivalent inactivated vaccine, and a standard dose quadrivalent inactivated influenza vaccine. Step one, determine the research question. Our research question could be, is a new vaccine more beneficial than the vaccine currently in use in reducing the number of influenza infections, hospitalizations, and deaths in older adults for the next flu season? With mathematical modeling, we can show which seasonal influenza vaccine provides better protection to this population. Step two, identify the key biological processes. Next, we need to understand the natural history of the disease, including transmission dynamics and immunity development to create the model. Step three, adapt the disease process to a model. In our model, we can illustrate how different vaccines affect the spread of seasonal influenza between susceptible and infected peoples. Step four, collect and input data as parameters and assumptions. To answer our research question, data inputs can include rates of infection, strain infectivity, vaccine efficacy, and vaccine uptake and coverage. We can also use expert opinions on the vulnerability and resilience of the population. Step five, apply and investigate the effects of changing parameters. To answer the research question, we create models of three virtual trial worlds for an elderly population. In world zero, the base scenario, they receive no vaccine. In world A, they receive vaccine A, and in world B, they receive vaccine B. We determine a base scenario that produces outcomes closest to observed data for past infection and hospitalization rates through model calibration. That is, changing the numbers related to transmission rate and other assumptions about the population. Step six, model scenarios. We can explore the minimum vaccine coverage needed to significantly reduce influenza infection in the elderly population through adjustments to each vaccine scenario. Step seven, interpret the findings. To answer our question, we compare the base model, no vaccine, to the vaccination models for the number of infections, the number of hospitalizations, and the number of deaths. If our model finds, for example, that vaccine A reduces the rates of hospitalization and death among the elderly, this would reduce stress on families and the healthcare system. We can also estimate the costs and potential cost savings of this intervention. Mathematical models are used to test what-if experiments and represent simplified versions of a complex system. They will always be limited by how well we understand the biology of the disease, interactions between people, and consequently the data used in the model. And because there are so many things that we do not know, the model will always give a range of estimates that reflect these uncertainties. Modeling is a time and cost effective strategy and a valuable research method for helping to make public health decisions that can improve the health of a population. You can learn more about modeling for public health at the National Collaborating Center for Infectious Diseases, nccid.ca.